Hi, art family. Are you wondering how to achieve more realism in your paintings? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I painted this hot air balloon landscape in an easy layered approach. Layering your colors is fun, and I'm going to show you some great tips for building up your colors. It's Dina Tollefson. I'm so glad that you're here today. I started with this 30 inches tall by 20 inches wide stretched cotton canvas that you see here. And then I toned the entire surface with yellow, uh, yellow ochre, fluid yellow ochre and acrylic. And this yellow ochre toning gets rid of that scary white canvas and sets up a really nice middle value. And it helps you judge your colors and also helps give kind of a nice warm glow onto your painting. Letting that dry for a full day, I then use graphite to draw on my subject. So this next step is one that many artists will skip and I feel it makes such a difference, creating a tonal underpainting. I'm mixing yellow ochre and phthalo blue red shade to make a set of values using my value scale. So you see this little scale here, um, values go between one for black and white is value 10. And the idea is that uh, a dynamic painting will have everything between value 1 and value 10 and, and values in between. But trying to make sure that you get everything from almost white or white to almost black or black in your painting will make it feel more dynamic. I'm ignoring the hue or what we might think of as color uh, right now, just focusing only on how light something is or how dark something is and how dark that area needs to be. And the more you include values going from white to black in all of the areas in between, the more dramatic your painting is going to be. I'm painting the tree line here. And now the mountain in the distance. The mountain is going to be a lighter value than the trees. There's a lake here and the trees are reflecting into the water. So a thing to keep in mind is that a body of water is always going to be darker than the sky. So I'm using this kind of lightish value to make that water. Now I need to make, I can see I need to make an adjustment here onto the mountain value to make it a little bit darker than the water color. And the top of a sky, another tip is that the top of a sky is always going to be darker than the horizon. So I'm going to um, add up some dark up at here at the top of the canvas um, to indicate the top of the sky. Okay, now we're going to go for some color. I'm uh, using uh, golden heavy bodied acrylics in titanium white, primary yellow, diorylide yellow, yellow ochre, Naples red, phthalo blue red shade, French ultramarine, diaxazine purple, and Mars black. And that's uh, pretty much my standard palette of colors. Oftentimes I'll have some pyrrole orange in there too, maybe a different blue, but that's pretty much my standard palette. So let your tonal underpainting dry for at least an hour before you try and layer anything on top. Or you can always use a heat tool on it also if you want to, or a hairdryer if you want to speed up the process. Imagine if you tried to skip the drawing part and the tonal underpainting part and you would not be able to paint as confidently and it would not be as fun at all to do. Let's start on the balloon painting with laying on the lightest light and the darkest dark. So all the other colors, so we've got the 1 and the 10, so all the other colors are going to be between these colors. The sun is shining from behind the balloon and radiating out, so I'm going to be using titanium white mixed with a really tiny small amount of primary yellow. And then also notice that I'm painting with brush strokes radiating outward as the sun's rays. This junction where the sun meets the balloon is going to be our focal point, where the people are sitting in the basket and it's right, um, kind of intersecting right where the strongest rays of the sun are. Light against dark catches the viewer's eye and makes a natural focal point. Mixing Mars black and primary yellow to make a kind of a dark tree color. Uh, this can work with our toned underpainting and now and then I'll, I'll put in a little bit of straight Mars black to darken some of these sections. 
Can you see these colors I've mixed for the sky? Ultramarine blue plus a little bit of white for the top of the sky. And then phthalo blue red shade plus titanium white for the middle section of the sky. And then down near the horizon is titanium white plus diorylite yellow and a tiny touch of phthalo blue red shade. I'm using an inch and a half inch brush and painting in the direction of the sun shining, dipping periodically in a little bucket of clean water to make the paint flow. Now dipping again into the water and changing to progressively lighter colors as we move towards the horizon. I'm allowing bits of that yellow ochre toned underpainting to peek through and this will unite the canvas, the look all over if that little bit of that yellow ochre peeks through everywhere. And I'm also thinking about following the upward path established by the sun and to make our balloon feel like it's moving up in the sky. Working on the mountains, I'm wanting to pick a color which is similar to the sky but a little bit darker and maybe cooler, a little cooler in color. So this light violet color helps create a mountain feel. Now adding in the water and remembering to pick up the darker color of the sky. And our tonal underpainting will help keep that color dark. Okay, so you may be wondering, why should I bother with toning my canvas and making a toned underpainting and go to all that effort? Well, here's a yellow balloon just on white paper. And now let's make one with a toned underpainting. So I'm gonna put a little yellow ochre here. Let's let it dry. And now put that same primary yellow on top. So this is fine, but it's not very three-dimensional. So now if we do a toned canvas plus a toned underpainting using the same colors that we used on the hot air balloon painting, so that's yellow ochre with a little touch of phthalo blue red shade, and then now let's put the yellow on top, let it dry, put the yellow on top. But do you see that this is much more realistic? And we can also go uh, the next step and add one more element which would be highlighting. Uh, with a mix of primary yellow and titanium white and be sure to let the layers dry in between and then with the same yellow on top. Okay, so let's add a little bit of sky around each of these balloons. And the plain yellow balloon does look bright. I will say it looks bright, but it is not very realistic and not particularly complex looking. But you can see that now um, by using a tonal underpainting with or without highlights, but getting that underpainting in there really is helpful to try and create a sense of realism. So I will now show you on our hot air balloon uh, painting how we can add a highlight uh, like we did here. And this is going to help make our balloon start to take on a more rounded shape. So I'm hosting the Sky is the Limit Art Challenge and this hot air balloon painting is for the challenge and I hope that you will check out the playlist I'm creating of every participant in the challenge and everyone who's participating gets put into the giant playlist. I hope that you'll watch the other participants videos and show them some love. Be sure to check back and see when the next art challenge will be announced. These art challenges are open to all artists and all mediums and all art styles. It's always so much fun to see what everybody comes up with using the same prompt. So now adding teal, pyro orange, light green yellow shade, light magenta, and light violet to the palette. Painting in layers like this takes the guesswork out of painting, really. I guess in my mind, it, it really simplifies it and it, it makes it so it's not so intimidating to just go lay the paint in. If you, if you kind of plan it out, lay it on in steps, lay it on in layers, and if something doesn't look right, either you can wipe it off right away. or let it dry completely, paint over the top.
And by layering color over color, you can build up some really wonderful saturated colors. All right, now let me show you the secret ingredient for shading, which is adding glazing medium. So I happen to like uh, golden acrylic glazing medium in a satin finish. And what you do is uh, squirt a little bit on your palette and stir it up. And then apply it over dried paint. You want your paint below to be dry. And then you can get this great shadow effect or you can get 3D effects. And also check out in the description box in this video, I have a link uh, to the supplies I'm using. If you want to give this a try, um, this glazing medium is a lot of fun to use. And let's pop some of that ultramarine blue with the glazing medium at the top of the sky. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's video and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Be sure to come back and watch as I, uh, on part two, I'm going to be adding texture to this painting. It's going to be really interesting to see how it comes out with, a, with texture on top. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson and all my best to you. Bye-bye.